What's up, everybody? Uh, Silver Jackify here doing a Q&A, another Q&A on baseball card collecting. This is going to be part two. I did part one a couple months ago. I'll put a link to it in the video if you guys are interested. Basically, what I'm doing is uh, all the comments that I get on YouTube, answering questions, mostly about baseball card collecting, but also just in baseball in general. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first question, uh, Mark S. says, when Girardi is done, bring in Mattingly to manage. Let him get his ring as a Yankee. So I just wanted to comment on the playoffs. Obviously, you guys know that if you watch my channel, I'm a huge Yankees fan. And uh, it's been a brutal series for Joe Girardi. And uh, he, you know, game two was really tough. Took out CC probably a little too early. Obviously, my big problem is the, uh, the, the hit by pitch that he didn't challenge. And uh, sometimes with Girardi, he gets a little too analytical. And uh, his reasoning behind not challenging it was because he didn't want to take Chad Green off his rhythm. But you could tell if you watch Chad Green, I, I don't know what Girardi was watching, but Chad Green was clearly off his rhythm from what I was watching. And I didn't see any reason why not to challenge at that point. Uh, but so a lot of people have been talking about getting rid of Girardi. Uh, with all that being said, I actually think that the Yankees should keep Girardi. And, uh, you know, my main, my main thought is, okay, if you're going to say we're going to replace him with Terry Francona, yes, go ahead and do it. But right now, who are you going to replace him with? You know, uh, are you going to replace him with Terry Collins? Just uh, that's that's the biggest problem for me is, is who are you going to replace him with? I think he's a pretty good manager. And, uh, you know, I, I, I get it that he could be a little a little over-analytical. But all in all, I, I, you know, I think he's a, a, a decent manager. But that was a pivotal point in uh, the uh, the series so far with the Indians. And uh, it, pro it might actually end up uh, leading to the Yankees' demise in this series. But it is what it is. Uh, Brazel says, I hate your intros and outros. Please stop using them. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll try to um, not use the intros and outros as much, you know. Ryan Quinn says, great video, new to the hobby with a few exceptions. I don't plan on going on and buying high-end cards, etc. Any tips are appreciated. Hope to hear back. So, if you guys uh, watch my videos, you know that I really don't sell cards. I'm more of a buyer. And uh, so I can only give you my advice from a buying perspective. First of all, in terms of uh, where you can get the best values, whether you're buying a 25 cent card or a $10,000 card, if you go to a baseball card show, you are going to get the best values possible. Now, the only thing is if you're an amateur and you go to a baseball card show, you're gonna end up probably paying more than you should because on average, cards at baseball card shows are gonna cost you a lot more than buying it on the internet. But the beauty of if you really know what you're doing and you go to a baseball card show, there are some uh, cards that are like diamonds in the rough that you're never gonna get on the internet. So, um, but with that being said, if you're an amateur, I do definitely recommend using eBay, uh, especially in terms of finding out how much a card uh, actually costs or what it's going for. So I wanted to show you guys an example. So let's say, and this is a card that I've been looking at for a long time now, uh, the Ken Griffey Jr. 1989 Upper Deck PSA 10. So let's say I'm interested in this card. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put in Griffey, you can see here on eBay, uh, and what I do here is I go down to sold listings because I want to get a, uh, an idea as to what this card is going for. Now you'll see here that there are 101 results. What you want to be very careful of is if you're going to look at sold listings, make sure there's at least five or more sold listings before you say okay that's what it sells for because the problem is every once in a while there'll be a card that sells for way more than it should on eBay and a lot less than it should on eBay now the nice thing with this uh, Griffey 89 upper deck PSA 10 you can see that there are over a hundred 
sold listings over the last uh, month or so on this particular card. So this really gives me an idea of what this particular card is going for. So what I'll do is I'll sort this by uh, highest. So let's see, the, the highest that this card sold for recently was for 480. And then what I'll also look at is, okay, well, what's the lowest that this card has been so, sold for? And I'll scroll down until I see a, like a real listing. And uh, you can see here that there was a card that sold for 345. And as you scroll down, you start to get a feel for, okay, what is an 89 upper deck PSA 10 going for? And as I scroll through this, you can see here, okay, they, they generally sell, it seems, for around $400. So the way I look at it, you know, if you're looking at all these sales is if I can get it for under $400, I've got myself a really good, good deal. But if I buy it for over $400, I might be paying a little too much. So now that I get a sense for how much this card is going to cost me, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a look at the auctions for this card. Now I can buy it now. Uh, here, so let's see. Like, let's say I want to buy 89 Upper Deck PSA 10. I could buy it for 409.99, which is not bad. But let's say the best possible uh, deal that I'm going to get on this particular card is to look at the auctions. So what I'll do here now. Let's say I want this particular card. Uh, it's an 89 upper deck. It looks like I got eight days, one hour. Now, I may not have the time to sit around and wait for the card to sell. Uh, obviously, you know, you'd have, you, you have to time it perfectly if you want to go in and bid on the card right before, it, uh, before the auction ends. So what I like to, to do, and this is totally up to you, I, you know, it, it, this has been around for a long time, is a, is a thing called e-snipe. So the way this works is, let's say I'm interested in this particular card, and I'm not going to be around, I, like, I don't want to sit around and wait eight days from now and to, to try to see if I can get it for under $400. What you can do is you copy this link, and then you go to a, a, a site called eSnipe. Now, eSnipe's been around a long time. It's not like it's something that's brand new, so you guys might be very familiar with it. So what I'll do is, uh, you know, I'll be logged into eSnipe. I'll paste this into the URL into uh, something I'm interested in this particular item. I'll hit go. And uh, what eSnipe's going to do is it's going to ask me, what is my maximum that I want to pay for this particular card? Now, based on the sold listings, I've decided, you know, that the most that I'm willing to pay for this card is $400. And what I could do here is, uh, it, and it checks it back at uh, 90 minutes before. And it, what it's going to do is, it's going to bid on this on this listing six seconds before the end of the auction. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to place my bid. And what this does is basically the most that I'm going to pay for this card is $400. So let's say with uh, 15 seconds left this card is selling for $380 what this will do is it'll do an incremental uh, I think it's like usually like around five dollars so let's say that the the card selling for 380 with six seconds left it'll it'll put in a bid uh, automatically at like 385 and uh, so what it's going to do is if it goes if the auction goes over $400 it will not place the bid but if it's under four hundred dollars it'll do an incremental bid that's a little bit higher than the max bid uh, at that particular point in time and um, just so you guys know East Knight they do take they do it costs one percent uh, so whatever you pay for it you're gonna pay an additional one percent to use East Knight but it is an awesome way uh, if you guys you know especially if you're not gonna sit around and wait for a particular auction to end you can kind of say okay I'm, I'm the most that I'm willing to spend on this particular card is four hundred dollars I'm gonna put in my max bid amount and this will not go off unless it can get the card for under four hundred dollars and uh, within the uh, the time limit that I specify so that's basically the way the, the way that works Aliko3 says, you are spot on with the Judge bull market. We have already seen a downward decline. Maybe in the offseason there will be buying opportunities for Judge. Totally agree. Uh, 
Judge obviously during that home run derby went his cards went nuts. Then he uh, obviously had a lull, and now uh, in September he picked it up. And then of course in the playoffs, uh, especially against the Indians, he hasn't been playing too well. Uh, so cards, you know, it, it, you obviously want to buy low, sell high, and I'm sure next year there'll be some other guy that goes absolutely nuts. Who knows? It might be Shohei Otani. Point is. Definitely don't want to buy when the card is got all the hype in the world. Usually want to buy when the when uh, the uh, card is uh, selling at a low point, not when it's selling at a high point. So uh, next, uh, Mark says, great video. My biggest mistake was buying a hundred upper deck uh, <laughs> Greg Jeffries rookie cards. Now remember when I was a kid, Greg Jeffries cards were going absolutely nuts. And uh, that's like the beginning of the speculative buying, you know, back in the day when uh, Greg Jeffries was the was the card to get at like $20 a pop. I remember uh, those cards were going nuts. And every year there's, uh, you know, a new prospect that gets hyped up. And uh, who knows what, it'll, what will be for, uh, for next year. EA Hawley says, so pretty much all cards I collected from 86 to 94 are worthless. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because every once in a while, you know, one of my buddies will find out that I still collect. And uh, he'll say to me, oh, I got all these cards in the attic that I haven't paid attention to since, since I left uh, baseball card collecting. And uh, it's just amazing. I find the baseball card bubble from the 80s to be really fascinating. And um, if, if you look back, this has been going on. These bubbles have been going on since the 1700s. Uh, there was the, uh, the tulip bulb in uh, the uh, 1600s, uh, 17th century. Uh, when uh, toilet bulbs, uh, these are just flowers that went way up in prices, mainly because they were really rare. And uh, because of the bubonic plague, the I guess uh, at some point people just stopped showing up to, to buy these bulbs. And you can see uh, prices of uh, these uh, flowers went up to the point where they were selling for 10 times a person's annual salary. Can you imagine? And then one day they just plummeted. And now baseball cards uh, from the 80s didn't take this type of a, a dive, but it is sort of similar where the, uh, the baseball strike led to this crazy downturn in the market. And um, I saw that there's a, a thing called Odd Lots. A baseball card bubble can tell you. Uh, this is a great, uh, if you guys get a chance, there's a 25-minute uh, uh, sort of like a podcast. If you guys get a chance, I would highly recommend it. The guy from uh, the guy that wrote Mint Condition is on the podcast and talks about the baseball card bubble. You guys have heard me do the uh, the history of baseball cards. If you haven't, uh, please check that out. Uh, but I, I talk about it in the history of baseball cards, and then uh, Dave, uh, who did the uh, the uh, Mint Condition book, the author, uh, is also on this podcast and sort of talks about the history and why. Uh, baseball cards had hit this bubble and what led to the downfall of the cards from the 80s. It was just sort of mass population and it was the Beckett that sort of led to uh, the populariz popularization of cards being an investment. And of course the uh, the strike in 94 is really what led the, car the baseball cards to really hit that crash. So a uh, great podcast if you get a chance to check it out. And uh, finally, uh, Snoop12922 says, Great video on Mattingly. Love learning the history of players that make the game. Uh, obviously, this is in reference to the, uh, the video, the tribute uh, of Don Mattingly that uh, you know a couple of you guys watched, and I appreciate you guys watching that. Uh, very uh, random video that I did on uh, Donnie Baseball. If you haven't uh, had a chance to check it out, please do so. And uh, it's a lot of fun to watch. So, uh, good stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, just wanted to do a quick video. Hope everybody's doing well. Yankees won tonight. Very nice. Yankees win. And I will talk to you, to la talk to you later. Thanks. Peace.